वेलकम टू के बी आर नॉलेज हब दिस इज बाबू राव कुंचाला टूडे आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस अबाउट सूडान क्राइसिस एंड ऑपरेशन कावेरी सो सूडान क्राइसिस इन रिसेंटली इन न्यूज एंड इंडियन गवर्नमेंट लॉन्च ऑपरेशन कावेरी टू सेव द इंडियन सिटीजन फ्रॉम सूडान सूडान सो राइट सो नाउ यर वाई इन न्यूज इंडिया हैज स्टार्टेड ऑपरेशन कावेरी to evacuate its nationals going to the current crisis in sudan around 3000 indians are stuck in various parts of sudan including capital khartoum and in distant provinces like darfur that's why in news what is operation kaveri what is operation kaveri so operation kaveri is a code name for india evacuation effort to bring back its citizens stranded in sudan amid intense and fighting between the army and the rival paramilitary forces there so the operation involves the deployment of indian navies ins sumeda and a stealth offshore patrol vessel and two indian forces indian air forces c130 j special operation aircraft on stand in jada so now there are about 2800 indian nationals in sudan and there is also settled indian community of about 1200 in the country so what is the operation kaveri so now look here this map and you are able to understand the sudan map geographically sudan sharing boundary with the red sea and on side here and you can see it is very very important which is connected to the suez canal so right so now here what is the current crisis in sudan then i would like to discuss about this crisis in sudan so now before going to discuss here we need to know the background of the sudan crisis so first one the conflict in sudan has its roots in the overthrowing of long serving president omar al bashir by military generals in april 2019 following widespread protests so now here this lead to an agreement between the military and protesters under which a power sharing body called the sovereignty council was established to lead sudan to elections at the end of the 2023 right however the military overthrow the transitional government led by abdullah hamdo in october 2021 with burhan become the de facto leader of the country and daglo is second in command so the tussle between army and rsf started what was that tussle soon after 2021 cop a power struggle between two military that is SA, saf and paramilitary rsf generals arose and interrupting a plan to transition to elections and a preliminary deal was reached in december 2021 for a political transition but negotiations hit a roadblock over the integration of the paramilitary rapid support forces that is rsf with the sudanese armed forces saf due to disagreements over the timetable and sec and security sector reforms so right so now the tensions escalated over the control of resources and rsf integration lead into clashes and there was a disagreement over how the 10000 strong rsf should be integrated into the army and which authority should oversee that process and also daglo rsf general wanted to delay the integration for 10 years but the army said it would take place in the next 2 years and what is rsf first of all the rsf here is a group rsf is a group evolved from janjaweed militia which fought in a conflict in the 2000s in the darfur region in west sudan nearing the border of chad so right over time the over time the militia grew and made into the rsf in 2013 and its forces were used as a border guards in particular so now in 
the RSF along with the Sudan's army began sending troops to fight in the war in Yemen alongside Saudi and Emirate forces. In addition, in addition to the Darfur region, the RSF was deployed to states such as South Kordofan and the Blue Nile, whereas the Blue Nile, where it was accused of committing human rights abuses. So now here in a 2015 report, Human Rights Watch described its forces as men with no mercy. So now what are the repercussions of the current crisis? The first one here, difficulty in democratic transfer transition. The battle between the army and RSF has likely made Sudan transition to democracy more difficult. It is anticipated the tussle may transform into a wider conflict leading to the country's collapse. Now, economic crisis. Sudan's economy is struggling, battered by hyperinflation and crippled by massive foreign debt. Now, billions of dollars given in international support and debt relief were frozen after the ulster of the Hamdok government. So now here, a disturbance in neighboring countries, since the Sudan location borders seven countries, this conflict may spill over into neighboring countries and destabilize the region. Chad and South Sudan are particularly vulnerable. The situation could lead to a major external, major external interventions if the neighboring countries refugees from Sudan's contested areas have already arrived in Chad. Correct? Then how are Sudan, India-Sudan relations are there? How are India-Sudan relations? First one, a strategic significance of the Sudan. So, in the Sudan is located in Northeast Africa and the third largest African nation. Owing its strategic, owing its strategic location on the Red Sea, access to the Nile River, the vast swath of gold reserves and agriculture potential, it has a long been coveted by the outside powers, including its neighbors, the Gulf countries, Russia and the Western nations. Now, bilateral projects. The bilateral projects here, uh, it had already implemented 49 bilateral projects through concessional lines of credit worth almost a 612 million US dollars in areas such as energy, transport and agribusiness industry in Sudan in 2021. So support in Juba Peace Agreement, India support the Juba Peace Agreement. India supported Sudan efforts from a transitional government and also supported the Juba Peace Agreement signed by the government in October 2020. Right? And Chad UAE and intergovernmental authority on developing were to the ga guarantors while Egypt and Qatar, Qatar were witness to the peace deal. So the agreement covered various areas such as governance, security and justice and was importing for future constitutional negotiations. So right, and India also supported including armed movements from outside the negotiation process and a national plan for civilian protection with 1,200 personnel and Indian tech and next one Indian technical and economic cooperation and technically under the Indian technical and economic cooperation India offered 290 scholarship to Sudan towards capacity building besides India had offered humanitarian assistance including food supplies to Sudan in 2020. So bilateral trade between India and the Sudan. Over the years, the bilateral trade between India and the Sudan has grown from, from $327.27 million in 2005 to 06, 2006 to $1,663.7 million US dollars in 2018 to 2019. India's investments in Sudan and South Sudan were roughly and 3 billion US dollars, out of which 2.4 billion US dollars was invested in the petroleum sector from ONGC Videsh, a public sector undertaking. 
So right, the way forward and conclusion here, since India cannot depend only on West Asian countries such as Iran, Iraq and Saudi Arabia that constitute the global energy heartland. It has consciously cultivated relations with oil rich African states like Sudan, Nigeria, Angola to meet its growing energy demands. It will be important for India to protect its investments, trade and other interests in the home Africa. So the Red Sea region is crucial to India's maritime security strategy. Right. In view, of ex in view of existing structure of India-Sudanese ties and Sudanese location in the Horn of Africa, India needs to guard its trade, investments and interests in the region before taking any hasty steps of recognition of the new region. Thank you.